This video will show how Red Screen Expert can investigate the feasibility of using unglazed solar collectors to provide hot water to an indoor municipal swimming pool. The pool operates from mid-April through July only. It is currently heated with propane. I'll be nearly replicating a case study that comes with Red Screen. You can find it by searching for the location, which is Lillooet. This is a small community about 250 kilometers northeast of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I've already selected this on the Location tab. On the Facility tab, I have to change the facility type to Individual Measure and the type to Solar Water Heater. I've already configured the Finance tab with the parameters applicable to the real project, notably that there was a $10,000 government incentive available and the project was done without debt financing. On the Energy tab, I've already set up the Electricity and Fuels page showing propane, which we will use for heating, at 23.1 cents per litre, and electricity for the solar collector pump at 11 cents per kilowatt hour. Heating is currently provided by an old 60% efficient propane boiler. That is the sole source of heat in the base case. In the proposed case, any supplementary heat that the solar collector is unable to provide would be supplied by this propane heater. We need to estimate the hot water demand for this indoor pool. I'll open a hot water demand calculator under step 3 and use. For method, I'll select swimming pool. Just to make this hot water demand easily identifiable, I'll name it swimming pool hot water. This is an indoor pool. I'll enter the required parameters for the base case first, and then copy these values to the proposed case. The swimming pool area is 313 square meters. On average, it is 80 centimeters deep. No cover is used, so I will enter zero for the number of hours per day that the cover is used. The temperature of the water is measured to be typically around 29.4 degrees Celsius. The indoor air temperature is typically 1 degree warmer than this, or 30.4 degrees Celsius. The relative humidity is 60%. Uh, this is fairly dry for a swimming pool building, so that will increase evaporation a bit. The air velocity just above the surface of the water is 0.1 meters per second. This is squarely in the middle of the range suggested for this parameter. We need an estimate of the makeup water supply temperature. Red Screen can use a formula method applied to the climate data from the location tab. In this approach, it estimates that the minimum and maximum supply water temperatures are 6 and 14.6 degrees Celsius. On-site measurements indicate that the water is colder than this, so I will select user defined for the method and enter temperatures of 4 and 12 degrees Celsius reflecting measurements taken on site. As mentioned earlier, the pool is in use only from mid-April through July. I'll set the April value to 50% to reflect the pool being in use for half of April. Based on this description of the pool, RatScreen estimates evaporation of 946 liters per day. This is not the only source of water loss, however. Swimmers exiting the pool and periodic water removal and renewal result in a daily total water makeup requirement higher than this. I'll use 1,210 liters per day, a value suggested by the system designer. In other pools, the difference between the daily total water makeup requirement and the daily evaporation may be much larger. One way to estimate this would be to look at the change in the level of the pool over the course of the day. With 1,210 liters of makeup water, Red screen indicates that it would be only 3.9 millimeters. Since there are no changes to the pool itself in the proposed case, there are no incremental initial or operation and maintenance costs or savings, and I can simply copy all the base case parameters to the proposed case using copy base to proposed. The requirement for heat is 242 gigajoules per year. This must come from either the propane boiler or, in the proposed case, the solar collector. I will now add this solar water heater. Retscreen has correctly assumed that the solar water heater is being dedicated to the swimming pool hot water requirement. 
and it reminds me that 242 gigajoules of heat at a temperature of 29.4 degrees Celsius is required. The pool building has a sloped, south-facing roof ideal for mounting of the solar collector. The collector will be fixed in place and not track the sun. The slope of the roof is 3 and 12. I find that this corresponds to 14 degrees by taking the arctan of 3 divided by 12, or 0 0.25. Since the roof faces due south, in the convention employed by Rat Screen, the azimuth is 0 degrees. Clicking on the down arrow, I confirm that the season of use entered for the hot water demand is reflected here. I'm going to use unglazed collectors. These low-cost collectors lack glazing meant to cut heat losses to the air, but they are appropriate for a seasonally operated swimming pool, where the temperature of the water will not be much above the outside air temperature. We need to supply six parameters, determined using standardized testing methods, that characterize the collector efficiency. It is not necessary that you understand what each of these parameters refers to. You can simply copy them from the spec sheet, but I'll give a brief explanation of each. You can find more detailed explanations in RetScreen's help. These parameters can be taken from the product database or a product specification sheet. These may provide an incomplete set of parameters, in which case you might need to use help to estimate reasonable guesses for the unknown parameters. You can test how sensitive your results are to changes in these parameters. In this case study, we know from the product supplier the following values for the parameters. The particular collector model being proposed has a 4.4 meter gross area. Because there is no frame on this unglazed collector to block sunlight from reaching the collector surface, the aperture area, that is the area of the collector which can actually make use of the sunshine to heat water, is equal to the gross area. The FR tau alpha coefficient is a measure of the optical efficiency of the collector, that is, how well the collector transforms incident sunshine into heat in the water. For this model, 88% of the incident sunshine would be seen as heat in the water passing through the collector. The collector will tend to lose some of this heat to the environment. These thermal losses are parameterized by the FR UL coefficient. It indicates the heat loss, in watts per square meter of collector area, for every degree Celsius difference between the temperature of the water entering the collector and the ambient air. I'll enter 9.96 here. With an unglazed collector, however, winds affect both these FR tau alpha and FR UL coefficients. The FR tau alpha coefficient describing optical efficiency declines with higher wind speeds by an amount equal to an adjustment factor multiplied by the wind speed experienced by the collector. The adjustment factor for this model of collector is 0.029. The FR UL parameter characterizing thermal losses increases with higher wind speeds by an amount equal to an adjustment factor multiplied by the wind speed experienced by the collector. The adjustment factor for this model of collector is 4.56. RetScreen suggests the use of 54 collectors at this point. In the real project, the supplier proposed using 63. I will stick with the supplier's estimate. 63 collectors would take 277 square meters of roof area, which is feasible, and be able to supply just under 200 kilowatts of heat under test conditions. The miscellaneous collector losses will be estimated at 1%, a fairly low level. This reflects that during the season of use, there should be no snow losses and dust should not be too problematic due to regular rain. No heat exchanger is required because the collector is used only in summer, no freeze protection is required, and the pool water can circulate directly in the collector. There is no storage tank, so no losses are associated with that. The collector is directly above the mechanical room, so the piping run between the two is short, also keeping losses down. Furthermore, the temperature of the water is not particularly high compared with the air temperature. Miscellaneous losses of 1% are estimated for the balance of system. A booster pump is required to circulate water in this collector. I'll need to account for the electricity consumed in the pump. 
With a large collector such as this one, the specific pumping power is typically quite low. A value of 3 watts of electricity consumed in the pump per square meter of collector is estimated. We'll pay 11 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity consumed in the pump. The initial costs can be estimated using the cost database. In this project, we have an estimate from the equipment supplier, however. At $40,000, it is a bit higher than the cost database estimate. The equipment supplier also estimates operation and maintenance costs of $130 per year, which is fairly low. Based on the values of the above parameters, RetScreen estimates annual electricity consumption of 575 kilowatt hours in the pump. This is small compared with the 64,000 kilowatt hours, or 231 gigajoules, of annual energy savings in fuel. That is 95% of the 242 gigajoule heat requirement. The comparison page shows that the propane savings of $3,500 per year far outweigh the electricity costs for the pump of $63 per year. The include measure table summarizes the project and indicates a simple payback of 12 years. But this does not include the $10,000 incentive found on the finance page. With the incentive, the simple payback period is nine years. The $40,000 equity investment is paid back in 8.2 years. Furthermore, the internal rate of return of 11.5% reflects a relatively profitable project. A municipality or an energy service company with a long-term vision would find this attractive, as evidenced by this being a real project built in Lillouette a number of years ago.